All right, what's going on, guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing our weekly review for this week's episode for The Walking Dead season 11, its final season. Uh, this is for Out of the Ashes. Alright, Impossible Spoiler Warning, if you guys have not seen this episode yet, you're going to want to watch it before you watch this uh, review. So again, you guys know the drill, one week early AMC Plus streaming. Uh, if you're watching regular AMC, this episode will air next Sunday night. So next uh, weekend, we'll post the review. Now this one aired kind of late for me on AMC uh, Plus, AMC Premiere. Um, the episodes up until now have been released on late Saturday night, so I get the review done for you guys early Sunday. Uh, but this one uh, didn't. I had to wait, you know, to watch it. So we'll release the uh, the review now. It is what it is. Um, they haven't been releasing them exactly at the same time, depending on your region, depending on you know uh, how you access AMC Plus. Some people get it. Sometimes you don't. You know, depends. Um, so episode five, out of the ashes. So we're now into the uh, second half uh, for this first third of The Walking Dead uh, season 11 and uh, I felt like this was uh, a pretty fun episode pretty good um, you know we get to kind of catch up with it's sort of like an in-between episode where you get to catch up with a lot of the different things that are happening in different locations we have several groups in this one we have the group at the Commonwealth and what's happening with them Eugene and the others Yumiko and the others we have the group with well a splinter group I suppose with just Maggie and Negan, and then spoiler warning later on with Gabriel as well too, and the other um, newcomer from uh, uh, Maggie's group. Uh, and then we have Aaron and uh, uh, Carol and the others that are kind of with him that go back to the hilltop, which is cool. And then we also, on top of that, get to see uh, Alexandria as well. So several locations, several different things happening, and, um, you know, uh, a pretty good overall. I guess if we have to pick for kind of like a lead for this episode, it would be uh, Aaron. Uh, the episode starts off with him, and he's having somewhat of a nightmare, but, uh, you know, I don't always like nightmare stuff stuff in a TV series. A lot of times it can be used to just kind of, uh, you know, pastime or can be used as filler. In this one, though, it was, it was pretty good because um, we got to see in, in Aaron's kind of nightmare and his dreams some of the, um, you know, older villains in the series that we probably haven't seen or thought about for a while, which was really cool. Sort of a flashback to the wolves, which I thought was very, uh, you know, uh, very cool because that's something I didn't even really think about. Uh, you know, for a second there, my mind had to do a double take. Like, am I watching the right season? Uh, <laughs> I guess I was like, what season is this? Uh, you guys know I love season six. So that was pretty cool. And you get some whispers in there too, which was pretty sweet. And then I feel like maybe some saviors because you see like a guy with guns and then Walker's kind of uh, around as he's kind of defending Gracie. And you have kind of these different uh, villains from throughout the series kind of coming at him. Uh, it was a pretty cool kind of nightmare uh, sequence. I don't usually like them, but I actually did like this one. Um, and that kind of sets us off with this sort of being an Aaron sort of uh, a centered episode, at least uh, at least a little bit. And you know we have the intro, and then we go to the common uh, the Commonwealth. So we have the um, kind of like the uh, orientation tape. Uh, it's like Commonwealth uh, propaganda orientation. Uh, you know, like you're uh, you're you're a noob at the Commonwealth, so you got to go through this. You got to watch this uh, silly VHS tape, which is done. I, I love it though, because it's like '90s style. It's got like the scan lines on it, retro style, and uh, it's pretty funny. You get to see Lance. Uh, there's mentions of Pamela Milton, which we have seen uh, some pictures of her released, but we haven't seen her in the Commonwealth in the TV series just yet. So she's still to to come. We have uh, Yumiko who finds her brother in the TV series version uh, who is baking cakes and that is Tommy. So they kind of switched that from the comics. In the comics it was Michonne who found uh, uh, Elodi. Uh, obviously TV series version has to be different. Michonne's not here. So they use that for um, Yumiko to meet her uh, her brother so and i guess he was a surgeon before but now he's baking cakes and it's kind of a secret he doesn't want people to know that he's a surgeon because then they'll probably start asking him to like go in and start saving people's lives and everything so he's kind of he's kind of taking it easy and keeping it a secret um we also have the the rest of the commonwealth group with eugene um sort of stephanie if that is even stephanie who might be kind of spying on them 
and uh, it seems like that's probably the case. Um, but the Commonwealth is sort of kind of giving them some leeway, and then it looks like they're going to be kind of tried, like they're going to have a, a judge and have like a, a trial for them uh, because they try to use the communicator, which I actually liked a lot because, um, you know, Eugene reaches out and gets a response from Rosita, and, uh, you know, I kind of forget in my mind, like when they left, the Whisper War was still going, and it was, you know, it feels like a long time ago now because remember, that's before... They had to like take half a year off from Walking Dead because of the world situation. The, they did the bonus episodes and all that stuff. So that's like they left like back like during the Whisper War. Um, so they don't even know at that time. Eugene doesn't even know if the group had actually defeated the Whispers. He doesn't, from his perspective, him and the others don't know that um, Rosita, everybody else, Daryl, the the crew were able to actually beat the Whispers back, and now, uh, but but Hilltop has fallen. But at least now he knows they're still alive, right? Which is good, and that they they won the war, which is uh, which is a big update for him. But then it gets cut as soon as they're going through it because uh, Mercer comes in. I did like the scene where uh, Princess is trying to like uh, distract Mercer. And she tells him that he has beautiful eyelashes. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, she's just trying to get him, like, uh, you know, kind of distract. Well, maybe maybe half genuine, right, too. But she's trying to distract him and kind of get him looking away so he doesn't go in. But he does end up going in and catching the, uh, the others. And um, so, you know, you have Stephanie. And there was also another character that was kind of shown there with the ice cream thing. Uh, and some people have kind of mentioned to me already, like, Trevor, are we sure that's actually Stephanie, the, the person that Eugene was talking to? Uh, or is was that the other lady who was getting ice cream and uh, who didn't respond to Eugene? So it's possible that the, the lady that's, uh, that says she's Stephanie, that says she was talking with him on the radio might not actually be her. It could be like a spy uh, that they've brought in to kind of keep tabs on them because they kind of know that they have an inkling or they have an idea that uh, you know Eugene and the others might be part of a larger group and so uh, the Commonwealth is sort of kind of setting things up to kind of like keep tabs on them monitor what's going on and then possibly later on we'll be meeting you know the rest of the crew after they're likely done with the Reapers probably later on this season so we get kind of the start of that stuff going on in this episode and it was it was pretty good to watch uh maggie and negan they're part of this i don't have too much to say there were some funny scenes and whatnot they're kind of fighting back and forth as you might expect i like the part which was in the trailer i think where uh maggie like throws a, a knife like right through negan and he, he ducks it and kills a walker behind him uh, but it was pretty cool because i get the sense that if negan didn't duck it would <laughs> just kill him and then she's be like well whatever um, so Maggie is struggling with the, uh, with having to deal with Negan, questioning why she hasn't just killed him yet in her mind and, uh, and, uh, and all of that. So not too much to say about that. They basically go and get a little bit of food. It doesn't seem like it's a lot. They get a little bit and, uh, Gabriel shows up near the end after they have been arguing of just leaving with the food prior. Uh, but it looks like from the preview, we might be seeing them <coughs> encounter the, um, uh, the Reapers, so possibly they will get surrounded, possibly they will get pressed, and somehow you have Daryl and Leah kind of in the mix there somewhere with the Reapers, um, and uh, we'll have to see how that kind of whole thing sort of sort of plays out. Um, so that's kind of those parts. Um, you know, part that probably I enjoy the most was the stuff with uh, Aaron at the hilltop and the others. Uh, there was, I guess we'll get to that in a sec. There was the stuff at Alexandria here, which was okay for Judith. She's like training the others. And then this bully kid, who I do not know the name of, um, he might be a new cast or something. I don't recall seeing him before. Kind of like starts to... They're playing with some walkers, and Judith is like, what are you guys doing? You know, that's super dangerous. Like, if one of them bites you, you're dead meat. So she's trying to tell them, and they're not listening. They're kind of horse playing around and stuff. And then possibly they break some of her stuff that she had made with Carl and some of the others that were important to her, uh, handprints and what have you. Um, so, you know, the, it's not cool. So so you've got kind of like an antagonistic a villain being set up here in this older boy uh, for Judith, I feel like. And she kind of puts a sword to him, uh, and uh, you know, it's kind of like, you know, you get the sense that she's she 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 would do it if it comes down to it, but he hasn't really given her enough of a reason yet. But he does say stuff to her like uh, he, uh, you know, he he is a bit uh, a bit scathing with his words, and that he says that you know everybody's kind of left her, mom's left her, whatever, and so that's very hurtful for for Judith. And, uh, you know, kind of some sad scenes to see. 
But you have Rosita, who has a good scene with her, where she kind of consoles her, and they kind of talk things over. And uh, and uh, Judith is learning to deal with everybody leaving, right? Um, <laughs> because that's kind of happened, and certainly Rosita has been through that many times over the uh, over the years, um, over and over and over again. So. Um, you know, I like that scene as well too. That's a that's a touching one. It's a sad one. Uh, maybe a little bit of a tearjerker when Judith is like crying and stuff like that. And really, it just makes you hate this kind of bully kid who, like I said, I don't really know, but he's kind of like messing around and, and just causing causing mischief for no reason. Um, and uh, so it's it's the first kind of th- I feel like it's the first kind of thing we've seen for Judith like that in the uh, in the series. Um, but, uh, you know, some of the scenes with them are cute, like when they're playing with the swords and they're training and, you know, the kids and you got Herschel's around there too. And so, uh, and Grace as well too. Grace, you've got some time in this episode as well. So it's cute to have, you know, the kids playing and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, this one's different. It kind of is like, I hate this, I hate this bully kid, right? Uh, so <laughs> I got that going on. And then, um, Finally, the stuff with um, the hilltop with Aaron, which did surprise me and kind of made him the stand-up for the episode for this one for me, even though Carol was there too, so usually she would be. But some really good stuff for Aaron in this one in that they they go to Hilltop, which was cool just to see again also. It was cool to see the hilltop. It's kind of all messed up and everything, but it was cool to see it. And then, um, you know, we... Uh, Lydia notices that there is a group of walkers that are kind of being herded around and she recognizes what's happening that one of them must be a, a whisper in there because somebody's using a tactic that Alf and the whispers did use. So uh, I thought that was very cool because I thought that the whispers were finished. I didn't think we were going to see anything with the whispers ever. I thought they were kind of their story was was done for good. But I liked how they set them up in this episode to where he has nightmares, kind of about something similar, and also likely because there's walkers inside the gates and around and everything. So it's kind of like one of those where you can get a nightmare of something if there's something happening around you and you're sort of half asleep. Sometimes that can affect the dreams that you're having. If uh, something's happening around you and you're not quite woke, you haven't quite woken up and you're sort of in the middle. Uh, so it was good stuff. So so we see them being kind of herded around and uh, Lydia recognizes the uh, the technique and she's like, well, it must be something that's weird because it must be a whisper in there. They don't do that naturally. Uh, so... They go through Aaron and the others, and they capture this guy and basically find out that there's a little splinter group of, what is it, four or five, something like this, and they're kind of starving, and they're not doing all, they're not doing very well of whispers that are there. They kind of get into a tussle with one of the guys. Lydia sort of sympathizes with one of these uh, leftover uh, whispers. What do you say his name was? Uh, Keith, is that what he said? Something like that. I guess it doesn't matter too much. But basically, um, you know, so they have to kind of interrogate him and try to get the information out of uh, is he part of a, was there a group of whispers that survived? Is the war not over yet? Because ultimately you don't know. You don't know until you know for sure. And even sometimes then you still don't know. Um, So, yeah, so they kind of want to figure out if that's the case. And it's not. This is basically it. Every All the others have left after uh, Alpha and then Beta were defeated. They all kind of left, but this is a this is a remaining leftover. Whether or not we see them again in the series after this remains to be seen. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Um, will this guy want some kind of vengeance against Aaron because he does lose a hand now? Uh, tricky situation, whether or not to help him with that. Um, you know, given given the set of circumstances, I probably wouldn't personally, but I and I feel like Aaron wouldn't either. But he's kind of talked into it by Carol, Lydia, and the others that are around him. So to kind of go along with what they're saying, he doesn't. Uh, him and Jerry don't just kill them all. But um, it's uh, <laughs> uh, tricky, uh, or just tell them to get to get out or something or get lost. But they do find out from not killing him that they had seen Connie, and so near what they called a screaming cave. So there's that, and that could be could be something. I think in the preview they're kind of showing that. So Connie likely to return next episode, episode six. So it could be good. And that's really most of what I want to say about this episode. It was a really good episode. Favorite parts were stuff with Aaron, stuff with Rosita and Judith, and then also the radio, because that's very that is very big that Eugene and the others finally find out that yes, we won the Whisper War. So um, so everybody's basically well. There were some some people died in the Whisper War, but. 
pretty much everybody's still alive and they won. So I'm going to give this episode uh, 8.7 out of 10. I liked it. I enjoyed it and everything. Thought it was good. Lots of different stuff happening. And uh, it was good. It was cool. So that's it for this review, guys. If you'd like to, please thumb it up below, share favorite, and subscribe at the bottom if you're new. That's it for this one. See you guys again soon for another. As always, this is Trev. I'm saying peace. Later, guys. See you soon.